Many people today still think of the ancient Greeks as the founders of modern medicine. But that was 2,000 years ago, and clearly medicine has moved on a lot since then. But I still think we need to go back to the ancient Greeks, because they can help us think about a lot of issues that are relevant to medicine today. New, or maybe old, treatments. Ancient Greek medicine focused on three things, diet, drugs and surgery. And diet always came first. It wasn't diet just in the sense of what you eat and drink, it was about your whole way of life, your regimen. So what you exercise, whether you exercise too much, too little, and how much you slept, but also what came out of you, poop. Health was seen as the balance of fluids within your body, and that balance didn't just depend on your way of life, it also depended on how your body relates to the environment. Now with diseases like obesity and mental health taking up a lot of doctors' time today, that issue of environment can be really relevant. And I think it's important that we look at the ancient Greeks to see how they had a holistic approach to human health. Medicine requires trust. There was clearly a lot of unease about doctors in the ancient world. They had access to your body when you were very weak and they were strangers. Also, for a man in particular, even to be ill was showing a loss of masculinity. So having someone come in that you could trust with your body at a time like that was seen as very, very risky. To gain a patient's trust, a doctor had to make sure his image was right. Now today it's all about the white coat. Then it was about wearing simple clothing, avoiding strong perfumes, and never, ever quoting from the poets at the patient's bedside. If you've ever read any Greek tragedy, you'll know why not. It's just not comforting when you're ill to hear someone say something like, alone in my misery I would crawl dragging my wretched foot. Help. Just doesn't work. Treatments go in and out of fashion. Medicine isn't some linear process that just moves steadily onwards and upwards towards the truth. Things come and go in terms of fashion. Even things which we might think are pretty sensible. So for example, human dissection came in in the third century BC, but then it was rapidly abandoned again. Sometimes new things just don't catch on. Roman medicine seems to have started off as a simple, home-based, family-based herbal medicine system. But then it was eventually replaced by Greek medicine. Not immediately. Roman medicine didn't really make sense of Greek medicine at first. The first Greek doctor in Rome was actually known as the Butcher. So although Greek medicine in Rome wasn't an instant success, it did eventually take over. Not because it was any better than Roman medicine, I really don't think it was. Perhaps it took over because it had explanations attached. It told you why it was using particular remedies. We all want to know why. And I think that raises a really interesting question about explanations. Why am I ill? Why me? Why now? Ancient religion would answer those sorts of questions by saying it's the gods, or perhaps you've honoured the wrong god. But ancient medicine had a different approach. As well as saying it's to do with things you've done wrong, moral failings or eating the wrong foods, medicine would also say it's to do with something outside you, it's to do with your environment. So where you live, the prevailing wind, what the water supply is like, the time of year, the season, all these things can have an effect on your body. So it's not just about what you have done wrong. You've been a naughty boy. Once we know why we're ill, then we can do something to get better. And ancient medicine suggests that putting the blame on something outside the patient is actually a good strategy. If you've got something else apart from yourself, to blame, something external, then you've got something to fight, something to combat. We don't know everything. Okay, so perhaps I'm biased. My mother turned down a prescription for thalidomide when she had morning sickness, and of course thalidomide was subsequently found to cause birth defects in unborn children. So we'd be very naive to think we'd know it all. Medicine doesn't always have it right. The ancient Greeks thought they had all the answers. So do we. And looking back at a system like theirs, which lasted for thousands of years, must give us some humility about our own medical system. We've always got to be prepared to mm. rethink if something new mm. comes along. But the ancient Greeks also tell us that medicine needs to make sense to the patient. It wasn't like the modern system in which we're basically looking for a pill for every ill, for each disease, one treatment that works regardless of who you are or what your context is. Ancient Greek medicine was holistic, it was about preventative medicine, and it was tailored to the individual. 
I think that's important now because modern genetic medicine suggests that customised medicine, individualised medicine, could be the future. Studying the ancient Greeks helps us to think about the big questions in medicine today. Get more from The Open University. Check out the links on screen now.